Let love explode and bring the dead to life. I love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. I love so bold to see a revolution somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. And this world. Shake the ground with the sound of revival. Let heaven roar and fire fall. Come shake the ground with the sound of revival. you glad today that our God is alive and well. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord our God. And whatever need that you came in this place with today, he is able to meet that need. He's able to help you right where you are this morning. Hallelujah. He loves you. Let me just tell you that. Maybe you haven't heard that in your lifetime. Maybe you've not even heard it this week. Maybe you've not heard it for the last month, but let me just remind you today that Jesus Christ loves you. And he is concerned with what you're concerned with today. Allow him into your life to break the chains of sin, to break the bondages that you might have this morning. I love you, Jesus. Have your way in our lives today. Hallelujah. Every chain, 
Break every chain. Yes. Break every chain. Yes, he will. Oh, to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power.
I believe that. I believe that. There is power. Do you believe it today? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! There is power in the name of Jesus. Mm. To break every chain, <laughs> break every chain, Glory. to break every chain. Glory. To break every chain, Glory. break every chain, break every chain. Mm. There is power <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Mm. Jesus. There is power in the name. Jesus, oh, there is power in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, to break every chain, break every chain, yes. to break every chain, hallelujah, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, hallelujah. I don't have a lot to say this morning. I want to get ready to sing that part again about the army rising up. How many believe it? Through the power of God in the name of Jesus. That there is an army rising up. But what's interesting to me is that when we're in this army of the Lord, and I've heard that all my life since just a little boy that sings songs about being in the army of the Lord, but we're not out to fight a battle against people. We're out to fight a battle against the enemy. And when you look in the, in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit had come, the book of Acts, and, and the church is being birthed. I mean, it's, it's being built from the, from the ground up. And just shortly after the, the Holy Spirit comes there in the upper room, they have that great experience. We love to sing about it and preach about it. It makes good preaching. People get excited. We love preaching on that when people get excited. What's, to me, of, of all that, it's easy to understand. The Holy Spirit comes. He's people go out. The Bible says that they turn the world upside down. These are they that turn the world upside down through the power of the Holy Spirit, preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus. But in the midst of that camp meeting, that revival that was going on, God saw a man that needed him, just one man out away from everybody else. There's an Ethiopian eunuch out in the desert. Nobody else around. And God takes Philip out of this great work that's going on, all these thousands of people being saved, and God transports him from there out to where the Ethiopian eunuch is. Yeah. How's he get there? I don't know. The Bible just says he's here and then he's there. I believe the Holy Spirit just wow. grabbed him yeah. and... Yeah. You say, that's silly. Listen, I've got the faith to believe that a God that I've never seen created the earth that I stand on now. In the beginning, God, if I can believe that, then I can believe the Holy Spirit can come and grab a man from here and transport him there unexplainably because there was one man in a desert that was searching and seeking for God and reading the Scripture and could not understand it. But God said, I see where he is, and I'm going to take one out of the army in the middle of all the work they're doing, and I'm going to get him from here to where this man needs him. Listen, that's the God that we serve, that it's not just all about what's going on in this building, and I love the presence of the Lord and I love the spirit of the Lord but there are people out there that need soldiers of the army of the Lord to step out from where we are and to reach out to where they are because God knows where they are God knows they're in a desert God knows they're seeking and searching for he sent the Holy Spirit under their heart and there are people out there that are just waiting yes. for somebody to come and explain to them the scripture That's that their right. chains might be That's set free right. We spend so much time in the church preaching to the church, getting the church to live right and act right and get our chains off that we forget there's a whole world out there lost and bound by sin. But I know a God that sent His only begotten Son who could set the whole world free and every chain free if we'll simply take the gospel message to the lost and dying world. This week I spent several days out of town for work. And I was, you know, when you're, when you're out of town like that, you have a lot of time uh, in the evening. I didn't have anything to do, and I just realized a lot of time to think. What I realized was this, 
that God knows me and knows where I am, whether I'm in Ohio or whether I was in Michigan for a few days, whether I'm there for work, or it doesn't matter where you are. If you're in a desert, God knows each and every one of our heart. And if there's anything else I want to say today is I'm glad to know that I serve a God who knows my heart. He knows my mistakes, but he knows the intent and the motive of my heart. He loves me, he loves you, and he wants to set you free. I'd love to see somebody this morning as they sing say, I want to be a part of that army of the Lord. Somebody here who doesn't know Christ would just step out and come and give your heart to him this morning. It would be worth everything that we do today to stop and to pray with you and, 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 and introduce to you the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Sing it. Because there's power in your name. When we speak your name, the devil has to flee. When we speak your name, there is healing. There's deliverance in your name, Jesus.
Break every chain. Break every chain. How many know there's power in the name of Jesus? Say amen. I believe it. I believe it. I want us to pray today. We're going to, real quick here, uh, the Malak family, uh, Dell, who plays the bass, his brother passed away yesterday. And uh, his, of course, you know, Dell's mom's a precious lady. And uh, I always call her Dell's mama. I don't, I don't even know if I know her actual name. I just, I, she kind of gets a kick out of that. I call her Dell's mama. But, uh, you know, you never expect to bury your children, no matter how old you are. I know she's up in years. And uh, this is really a tough time for the family. So as a church family, I want us to agree together. Can you just pray with me right now that God will be with them and strengthen them and help them? Yes. Father, we thank you and praise you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for this family. We thank you, God, for their love for you, their, their faithfulness to you. They serve you on a weekly basis every, every week without fail. And I know that you're, you're there for them. Even in this hard time, David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for you're with me. And I know that you're with them. And you promised Isaiah, as a mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you, and you will be comforted. And I pray that you'll wrap your mighty arms around this whole family, pull them close to your chest, wipe their tears back, and give them your strength and your comfort as only you can do. And for all you accomplish, we'll praise you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. God bless you. We're so thankful for each of you that are here this morning. I'm glad that you got up. Yes. Amen. Maybe you're not glad you got up, but I'm glad you got up. Amen. You say, I just I can't hardly think of a reason to be happy today. Well, if you got up and your name wasn't in the obituary report, then you got something to be happy about. You got up. Look at your neighbor and say, you got up. And when you got up, you decided to go to church, led by the providential hand of God. You came to this church, and we're glad you're here. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you came to Life Change today. And then I want you to take about 10 seconds and welcome everybody that's online right now, part of this service. We're glad you're here as well. Thank you for being with us. The beauty and power of the Holy Spirit is He's everywhere and He's not limited. He can walk right through that camera into your living room or through your phone. You might be going down the road in the car or in a hotel room. I don't know where you are, but I want you to know He can go right where you are and touch your heart and change your life. And I believe He's going to today if you'll let Him. Just as He's moving here, He'll move there. And we're glad you're with us today. Ushers, I want you to get in place, and I want you to know you can also give right there online. There's a tab on your screen. Punch it, and be a part of the giving today. Uh, sow seed and give into something that's, that's accomplishing great things for the cause of Christ. Uh, preaching the gospel, people are being saved. And I want to encourage you to be a part of, of, of giving today. This worship uh, is so important in your life and for our church. Coming up. We awesome. thank you for that. And uh, we don't want to hear from Todd right now. We, we, we'll hear from him in a moment. But uh, let's pray over the offering. Father, we thank you and praise you for this offering. Bless it, multiply it, use it to establish your covenant on the face of the earth. To reach out, just like Pastor Mick talked about. To reach out, even to that one in the desert, and see people saved. May we accomplish what you want us to accomplish. In Jesus' name, amen. Coming up, October 27th is Trunk or Treat. That's a Sunday night. October 27th is Trunk or Treat. We need your help with this. This is a huge outreach for our church, and there are going to be lots and lots of kids uh, here that night uh, to get candy and, and all that. So we need you and your trunk here filled with lots of candy to hand out to the kids all around the parking lot. So please, please, please plan to be here. Get your candy all collected and be here October 27th. We're also going to give out prizes for the best decorated trunk and that. I think we have some gift cards that are pretty good sized gift cards uh, for the best decorated trunk. And, and so be sure you're here October 27th for Trunk or Treat. As most of you know, we're excited about the work that God is doing in Haiti. 
and we are honored to play a part, a role in the work he's doing there. And uh, we just came back from a from a mission team last month, and Dennis was one of those on this trip. And we're excited about a music opportunity that God is opening doors for at Open Door Haiti. Tell us about that, Dennis. Well, Pastor Will John introduced me to the 50 students at his school who wanted to play in a band. Between them, they were blowing on two trombones and three trumpets. The two trombones and two of those trumpets were borrowed. So one of the problems, of course, is they need instruments. When I took my trumpet out to give some lessons, all 50 of those students lined up for a lesson with the professor. <laughs> and they also asked me this, when will you come back again so you can help us? And they gave me a list of instruments that they needed. Folks, if you have an instrument in your house that you're not using, would you consider donating it to Open Door Church? If it's in good working condition and it has a hard case, please bring it into the church and then we'll work on how we can get them down to those 50 kids who want to play in a band. That's awesome. So over the next few weeks, if you have an instrument in your house, bring it in here to Life Change Church and we're going to work on getting those shipped down. We have a shipping container leaving Florida for Haiti in December. So if you can get your instruments here in the next few weeks, we'll collect those. Make sure they're in good working order, though. We'll collect yeah. those and get those down to the shipping container by December. Let me tell you another exciting thing that's happening for Christmas this year, and we're already starting this but we're, we're working on shoe boxes and we're gonna fill those shoe boxes with lots of uh, knee items they need there in Haiti. The children need gifts, those kind of things. And we have a brochure that's available in the foyer on your way out today. You'll be handed a brochure. It, and, and on that brochure, you'll see a list of things that, that you can provide in those shoe boxes and also the dates that we need them back by. I think it's the 17th of November. So you have about a month to get those boxes filled and back in here. So collect those shoe boxes, get a hold of one of those brochures on your way out today, and let's make a difference in the lives of children in Haiti. Hey everybody, don't forget tonight, Pastor Troy begins the Dig Deeper. And many of you have emailed in your topics that you want Pastor to consider uh, preaching on. And tonight, he'll be pulling those out of the hat and then and, and going with it and preaching on the topics that you have submitted through our website. So don't miss tonight at 6 o'clock as we go deeper with Pastor Troy Irvin. Also, next Sunday is Pastor Appreciation Day. I know you all appreciate our pastor, and, and uh, God has certainly blessed us as a church to have Pastor Troy as our pastor. So next week, we're asking you, bring an envelope, just a card of encouragement. Uh, write a little note in there and, and, and just tell Pastor how much you appreciate him and how much he, the, the word that, uh, from God that he brings us every week means to you and what it's done for your life. That will encourage him and bless him. So, so be a part of that. Next Sunday, you can bring those in. We'll have a basket there in the foyer. You can put those cards in. But listen, we are honoring Pastor next Sunday night, all right, with the three Sunday morning services. It's just too difficult to do that in three services. So next Sunday night, you be sure to be here at 6 o'clock next Sunday for Pastor Appreciation Day. really don't want to miss next Sunday, that's for sure. You really can kind of be here. <laughs> I mean, that's the best Sunday of the year, ain't it? Uh, I do want to encourage you with the Haiti, with the instruments and the shoebox. You know, the Bible says, to whom been given much, much is required. I want to encourage you to really help uh, with that any way you possibly can. I want everyone to stand with me. We're going to have prayer, and I'm going to get into the message. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the Holy Spirit that so faithfully unfolds truth to us and as your word goes forth I pray that it will be embedded deep within our spirit and spring unto everlasting life would you irrigate down these aisles and in and out of these seats would you touch each and every life change each person and help us to continue to trust you and believe you in and for all things in Jesus name amen amen you may be seated uh, we're in a series, The Journey. All of us are on, on a journey, the journey of life, the journey of faith. Those who have expressed faith in Christ are now on this journey that God has designed for us. Last Sunday, we dealt with Abraham, how he was on a journey to a promise, 
a promise that was not limited to a lifespan, but no, a promise that culminated in eternity. I don't know about you, but I appreciate the fact that the promises of God and the promise of God is not limited to a certain span of time, but rather it stretches even beyond breath itself into eternity. The promise of God will culminate in eternal life. Today I want to deal with Joseph. Joseph. He was on a journey to prominence. To prominence. Every one of God's people, God designs in our life a journey to promote us, to take us to a place of influence. Not all, not all of us will end up maybe at the rank of a Joseph, but nonetheless, somewhere in life, he's trying to take us to give us influence for the sake of somebody else's life. So in order to do this with Joseph, God gave Joseph great favor. <clears throat> it's expressed in his own father, Jacob, because Jacob looked at all of his boys and he had a favorite. <clears throat> Above Benjamin and Reuben and all the rest of them, he, he sees Joseph and he said, man, I, 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 I like this one the best. That was his favorite. Do you know God gives favor as a matter of fact you have to deal with it god has favorites you say i don't know about that a number of years ago uh well it's been four or five years ago now i was flying somewhere when i was still traveling pretty extensively and uh, i sat down beside a guy in the airport he had his garb on the collar and the whole thing he was a priest and of course you know he didn't know who I was. I don't wear a collar. I don't have any garb. I just have my jeans on, you know. He had no idea who I was. And so I was bored. I thought, you know, I'm going to strike up a conversation, a spiritual, religious conversation with this priest just because. And so I looked at the priest and I said, can I ask you a question, a, a, a spiritual, biblical question? He said, absolutely. Now, he had no idea who I was. He had no idea of my deep, profound knowledge of the Word of God that far surpassed his. He had no idea. But uh, that was a joke. And I said, I said uh, does God have favorites? He said, absolutely not, my son. God does not have favorites. I said, with all due respect, sir, you of all people, I would have thought, believed that. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, God looked at all the women in the world and saw Mary and said, I favor you above every other woman. I'm going to use you to bring my son to the world. I said, you of all people, I would have thought, believed that God had favorites. That he says, I'm going to give more favor to this one than that one. You say, I don't like that. That doesn't seem fair. Well, first of all, let me tell you that you don't want God to be fair. Because if God were fair, we would all be dead and in hell right now. Because we've all sinned. We've all done the wrong thing. All of us deserve to die. God is not fair and favor is not fair. But favor comes with great cost. And responsibility and I started talking to that priest and I started talking about favor and Bible and he, he looked at me and said who are you I said I'm just a good Catholic I'm teasing I didn't say that I never did tell him I was a Protestant preacher I didn't want to build the wall I wanted to continue the conversation I said, oh, I'm just a Christian that loves Jesus. And he said, my, you've got some wisdom. He got his notepad out and started taking notes. <laughs> and I said, do you have any questions? He says, as a matter of fact, I do. <laughs> I said, you might want to preach that Sunday at your church. The reality is God gives favor. And with that favor comes a great cost, a great responsibility, a big assignment and God gives favor to all of us, some more, some less, but with it, there's a great price to be paid. And Joseph was no exception. God favored him. His father favored him. And quite honestly, he knew it. His dad brought him in and gave him that coat. Remember the coat of many collars? I mean, 
can you see him in his youthful, inexperienced ways and full of himself? I mean, he's kind of marching around in front of his brothers. That's right. I'm the favorite. And I know how he feels. I'm the baby of seven. Quite honestly, my mom and dad love me more than they did the rest of them. I, mean, I know exactly how he feels. No, he's marching around, you know. And then Joseph has a dream. And in the dream, I don't have time to go to detail, but in the dream, God shows him that his brothers are going to bow down to him. The problem he had was his pride. Now, God used his pride and arrogance to put him where he needed to get him. And Joseph goes out and he tells his brothers, hey, uh, just so you know, one day you're going to bow down to me. And uh, you don't do that. Don't go tell your older brothers they're going to bow down to you. That's what he did. And they got furious, angry to the point they wanted to kill him. They were going to kill him. And Reuben said, ah, we can't do that. Let's just, uh, let's throw him in this pit. Don't you think it's interesting that God gives great favor to Joseph, shows him a dream that he's going to place him in a place of extreme prominence and the first step to prominence was a pit instead of going higher he goes lower instead of being promoted he gets demoted instead of being esteemed he's hated and to the point that they they take his coat of many colors kill an animal douse it in blood and tell his father that he's dead the whole time he's in a pit they're trying to figure out what can we do to get rid of him Listen to me. I can assure you when God shows you what he wants, where he's taking you, and the dreams he has for you, the first step will probably not be the place of prominence. More than likely, uh, life is going to end up in the pits. <laughs> Have you ever felt like not your second home, but your first home was the pits? Have you ever felt like you live in depression and it just seems like I can never get beyond this point? I know where God wants me. I can see it happening. And what you don't realize is what you think is a hindrance is really only the first step. And I'm preaching good right now. God, instead of elevating him, puts him in a place and Instead of him riding over and looking down at all of his problems, his place of problem, he's now, instead of looking down at life, he's looking up and seeing the bottom. He's sitting on a rug and his feet's hanging over. I mean, it's a low place, the pit. So his brothers, uh, it's amazing, I don't have time. Time, time just rolls on by. Uh, his brothers, they, they say, well, we've got to do something with him. We can't leave him in the pit. And... Uh, a band of slave traders are coming through and they say, Let, let's just sell him. We'll get a little money out of it. We'll sell him to these slave traders and uh, they can take him somewhere. And so they sell Joseph to slave traders. He's now a slave and when they get to Egypt, they sell him to Potiphar, some master, some lord in Egypt, a prominent person. Potiphar is, a, is an officer in the government. And uh, so now here's Joseph he is from the pit to Potiphar's house, a slave. Not a place of prominence. No, he's, he's in chains. But something interesting about this man, and it's the same thing for you and I if we're truly following Christ. Everywhere he ends up, he's now a slave, but man, he shines. It's as if cream always rises to the top. It doesn't matter that he's a slave. His being a slave does not take away the fact that God's put favor on his life. Him being a slave at Potiphar's house does not take away the fact that he's got great wisdom and ability to solve problems. Him being a slave did not take his gifts away, and it didn't take long for Potiphar to realize this guy is special. And not only is he special, he's gifted. And he's smart. I'm going to take him from digging ditches. And I'm going to put him as the one who runs my whole operation. He's my right-hand guy. He's going to take care of my whole house. And so there he is. He's in a place of prominence. He might have thought that was the place. This is good. I'm running Potiphar's house. But Potiphar had a wife. You know, those Egyptian women are just awful. 
And she sees this handsome Hebrew. Boy, it just seems like people of favor are always good looking. But uh, <laughs> you interpret that however you want. <laughs> I'm only joking. She says, this Hebrew guy, man, he is hot. And she had something for him. She wa Who knows how many slave boys she's had in that bedroom, but she wants Joseph. She calls him in and uh, comes on to him. She, he says, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. Oh, come on, man, it's okay. I, I won't tell. It's, 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 we are. Oh, no, 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 I can't do that. Now, now, listen, it, it, please, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be it's gonna be a great time. No, 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 I can't do that. And he runs out of the room, and she takes hold of his shirt or jacket and rips it off of him. And when Potiphar got home, she calls him into the room and says, look here, Joseph was in my room. And he took advantage of me. He raped me. She lies on him. <laughs> just when he thought I'm getting somewhere. Have you ever felt like I'm just starting to get there and bam, knock back down. I'm preaching better than your amen right now. Just when he's getting somewhere, she lies about him. And Potiphar says, that's it puts him in chains, and now throws him in prison. So he goes, here's his steps to prominence. A pit. Enslavement at Potiphar's house. Now he's in prison. You have to be thinking, if you're him, where is the prominence? Where is the promotion? Where is the dream, man? Now he's in prison. But once again, people of God, despite their surroundings, if you don't hear anything else, get this right now. If you are a follower of Christ, I don't care what kind of prison you're in, how dark it is, what job you're doing, wherever you're at, you need to do it with excellence, yes. rise to the occasion, yes. and shine as people of God. It, our external circumstance does not determine the favor and ability and discipline we should have in our lives. I don't like my job. It's a prison where I go every day. Well, shine. Be the best you can be. I'm miserable where I am. Be the best you can be. Your surrounding, and let me say this while I'm here. Let me just interject this right now. I am tired. Let me give you a sick and tired. You know, when your parents are really tired, they're sick and tired of your, you know what? I'm sick and tired of the church, of the church whining and complaining about the condition of the nation and our surrounding, and how dark it's getting, and how bad it is, and I don't know what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. It doesn't matter whether we're in a palace or whether we're in a prison. God is still God. We're still His people. Oh, I feel like preaching. No matter what the government does, no matter what the president or the Congress or the Senate no matter what legislation comes, no matter how dark it gets, God is still God. And I'm still His child. I'm still blood bought. I'm still born again. I'm still filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm still favored. I still have my gifts and abilities. Still got my mouth, baby. I still got everything He's given me. And I'm going to rise to the occasion. I'm going to step up the bat. It makes no difference. He can still use us. He can still do great things in us. He can still do great things through us. And we can shine like a light in the darkest hour. And the dark of the night, the bright of the light. I don't care where you are, you're still God's child. Woo! You might be in prison. But God is still God. You might be in prison, 
but you still have his favor. You might be in prison, but you still have your integrity. You might be in prison. But oh, let me tell you right now, you're on your way to the palace. We're going to step up. In these dark hours, who else can be the light? In these hours of confusion, who has the answer? In the moments of trial, who has the resolve? In the face of adversity, who has the strength? In the face of problems that are insurmountable and no one has the answer, who has the answer? I want to tell you, it's the people of God that have the answer, that are the answer, that will bring resolve to the problems of our world. All right, all right, what time is it? Oh, my. He's in prison. He's in prison. This is some promotion I'm getting here. And there's a, there's a fellow in there, he, he bakes. And he, he's a cup, he was the cup bearer for the king, the, the pharaoh. He done something to make Pharaoh mad because he's in prison. And he has a dream and Joseph says, here, let me tell you what's going to happen. I'm your friend. You're going to be promoted back to your place. Oh, by the way, and I'm paraphrasing. By the way, don't forget me. It's, isn't it interesting how the people around you get promoted and they always forget you helped them get there? I see people in places and I think, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be there. And all of a sudden you forgot all about me. Here I am in prison, and you're back up there serving Pharaoh. All you have to do is say, listen, let me tell you about a guy. So all you had to do is tell him about Joseph. No, he didn't tell him about Joseph until it served him. When Pharaoh had a dream, and in the dream, great fear because he saw the famine coming. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know what the dream meant. And I don't have time. It's just I'm out of time to talk about it. Just look it up. Read it. You ought to try reading the Bible. Great stories, man. It's an incredible book. Great story. Everything's in the Bible. I mean to tell you, you wait till next week when I'm talking about David. You don't need a soap opera. <laughs> Come back. You know what I'm talking about. You don't need days of... <laughs> Listen, he, he, he realizes I can get some brownie points with Pharaoh because I know someone that can interpret dreams. He says, hey, I was in prison with a guy, Joseph. You need to, you need to talk to him. So Pharaoh brings Joseph out of the prison cell. And Joseph interprets the dream. He says, there's going to be seven years of famine. He said, let me give you some wisdom, Pharaoh. Here's what we ought to do. He's right here in front of the Pharaoh. He says, the seven years that we're going to have great blessing and the land's going to yield forth a great harvest, let's hold back a portion of grain every year. And that will sustain us through the seven years that we get nothing from the ground. I wish Joseph would talk to our government. Yeah. Just thought I'd throw that out there for what it's worth. If you just hold back. <laughs> Do you hear me, Mr. President? <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. But I wish he would. You can't eat all the grain today. You'll have none tomorrow. <laughs> so... Pharaoh says, man, this guy's incredible. This guy's incredible. The wisdom, the knowledge, the gifting to interpret dreams, I need him. And so now he promotes Joseph to the palace. And not just the palace, but this place of prominence takes him to the third ranking official in the whole land, country. He's number three in charge. From a pit to enslavement at Potiphar's house to a prison, and God used every one of those steps to. But here's the interesting thing he was the same guy all the way through. He served and blessed those around him. Even though he's in a pagan land, he served Pharaoh, even though they were doing things that he didn't agree with, he served them. Listen to me. I want to, I want to mention a couple of things. One, how you get to prominence. And two, why you're there. Are you ready? 
Everyone say how? how? Why? You get there. Here's how you get there. You get there by having integrity, by following Christ, by living by his precepts and principles. No matter where you are, no matter how bleak or bad it is, you're, you're the same. You get there by loving and serving those around you, even though they're different than you. You don't get to prominence by being some spiritual, radical, Bible-thumping moron. It's going over like a lead balloon, I can see that. Because the church is full of a bunch of religious morons. I was in a pastor's meeting the other day, and I'm, quite honestly, I mean, some of them might think they didn't care for what I had to say, and I, I don't care. But... Uh, <laughs> They were talking about this, this baker who's in trouble legally right now because a gay couple comes in and they're going to get married or whatever. And uh, he said, I ain't baking you no cake. He refused to bake him a cake. Now listen, I, if you go out of here and say that Pastor Troy agrees with gay marriage, I will slap you right in the mouth. Because <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't agree with that biblically. Right. Amen. Amen. But I also think that it's wrong to commit adultery, and I also think it's wrong to lie, and I also think it's wrong to gossip. And some of you come to church every Sunday and do that and think you're all right. I, you know, a whole nother sermon right there. So I said in the pastor's meeting, I said, look, can I ask you a question? What does that serve? What does that do? I said, I, just won't, I ain't breaking you no cake. They said, well, what do you propose you should have done? I said, I think he should have baked it and given it to them. Are you agreeing? You're going along with No. No. But if he's going to draw the lines of sin, he needs to stop baking cake for anybody that's not a perfect Christian. <laughs> He'd bake cake for somebody else that ain't even a Christian. Might be an atheist, but as long as they're a man and a woman, they're, oh, yeah, I'll bake you a cake. Why is it neighbors move in? We don't find out what their lifestyle is. We try to welcome them, be friendly to them, and all the rest of them. But we segregate a certain group of people because of their lifestyle. I'm preaching good right now. Hmm? They said, you mean to tell you, you think he ought to just, you ought to, he should have just, he should have just, he should have just, yeah. And bless them with it. And what did he serve by being a moron? Well, I'll tell you what he did. He closed the door to those people ever listening to any Christian about Jesus. Or God's love. Hmm? And he also closed the door on a whole segment of people that might have bought cakes from him. He should have sold them the cake and took the money and give it to the church. Now those gay couple just supported the church. You're not hearing me. <laughs> this is going over great. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? You get promotions and prominence Joseph served everybody. Egypt was a pagan land. Nothing to do with Jehovah, but he served that land faithfully and that Pharaoh faithfully. And God used ungodly people. How did he get there? He did it by being a right kind of person who showed the love of God and then God used ungodly people to even promote him. Listen, you're not going to get where you're going to get just because you go to church and hang out with Christians. There's going to be a lot of ungodly people. God will even use ungodly people to promote His people. You're not hearing me. I'm out of time. Listen, Jimmy Swagger, years and years and years and years and years and years and years, and years ago, what's your opinion of him? It's immaterial. God promoted him really big for the preaching of the gospel. Years and years when he was nobody. Did his first little recording. He stopped by his cousin Jerry Lee Lewis's house. Jerry Lee, one of the frame workers of rock and roll. And uh, at that point, it's world known. He stops by his house and says, listen to my recording. And Jerry Lee listens to it and says, that's junk. You're a talented man. You can do better than that. Let's get my band. Let's go down to our studio down there, wherever it was in Nashville, and let's do a real recording. And so Jerry Lee calls the, the place and says, uh, I want to bring my cousin Jimmy Lee, the preacher down there, to do a recording, his first big recording. And, and uh, at this point, he's a nobody. And they said, he ain't doing a recording. That's against our rules, contract. He can't, he can't play the piano and sing here. And there was a guy at Jerry Lee's house, and 
And no one really knew who he was. Jerry Lee did, but Jimmy said, I knew who he was. And uh, he took a liking to Jimmy. So he come downstairs and said, you guys going to do your recording? And he said, no, they won't, they won't let me play there. The guy picks up the phone, makes a phone call, and then hangs it up. Five minutes later, the phone rings, and it's the studio saying, tell him to get down here quickly. Turns out, the guy was one of the head mobsters. <laughs> you don't, you, you, do you realize that Jimmy Swagger went to a national scene with that recording because country stations, they got, they got requests for his songs all week long. And, and that recording was the first thing that put him on the map to preach the gospel to the world. And God used a man in the mob to open the door. How do you get there? You get there by not being a moron. Jimmy could have said, I ain't going to let the mob open the door for me. Huh? No, no way I'd do that. I'm not going to go down to that ungodly studio and record Christian music. You're not listening to me very well. Are you? Hmm? Some of you shoot yourself in the foot all the time because you're just, you know. I better shut up. I? <laughs> hmm? No, God will use everybody. That's how you're promoted. But why are you promoted? You know why you are? Favor is given to us. Listen, favor is given to us, not for us. God gave great favor to Joseph, not for him, but so that he could be in a position that one day when famine come, this is going to be good. Are you ready? His family's starving. Jacob says, get down there to Egypt. I hear they got plenty. See if they'll help us out. They come walking in. They didn't even know it was Joseph. They come walking in. Now listen, remember the dream God gave him? The first thing that his brothers did, they come walking in and they bowed down. I want to tell you, I've had people, I've had people literally try to destroy me and say he'll never be able to build a church, he'll never be, he, he, and just talk bad about me and run me down because of things in my past. And stuff. They, they've had, I've had people just try to literally destroy me. It's just funny. When God gives you favor, it doesn't matter what anybody does or says. Huh? I think they ought to just come here and bow down to me is what I think. <laughs> I'm just teasing. No, they bowed down to Joseph. And then Joseph could have said, uh-huh. This favor God gave me come true. I knew they would bow down. But he realized God gave him that favor. Not so his brothers would bow down, but so that he could save a nation. And not just a nation, listen to me. It's from that nation would come a savior. A savior, the redeemer of all mankind, Jesus Christ, born of that lineage, born of that seed, from him would come the Savior of all the world. We are here right now because God gave favor to Joseph. And Joseph went on a journey from a pit to Potiphar's house, to prison, all the way to a place of prominence. Not for his sake, not for him, but so that he could save his brothers who would then in turn through their house save us. You're not there. Why does God promote you? Why will God give you any kind of prominence in life? Not for you. Not just so, well, I make more money now and I'm better off and I'm doing great. No, it has nothing to do with that. He puts you in a place of influence so that you can bring salvation to those who are hurting and helpless and lost. He gives you favor so that you can be in this place of influence. And when they come, when they come, say, let me tell you about a Savior. Let me help you in your struggle. Let me, you hear me? Every gift God gives us, it's not given for the sake of the person. It's given for the sake of the people. Stand with me, please. Well, 
it's a little different kind of preaching, teaching. It's not, it's not evangelistic by any means. It's to the church. But maybe you're here today and you say, I don't know Christ or I need God in my life. I need God in my life. No one's looking. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please. Just a moment. Before we leave, I wonder if someone would say, you know, Pastor, I need God in my life. I need Jesus. No one's looking, please. I need Jesus. Will you pray for me? Just slip your hand up. Anybody like that? I need God in my life. I see that hand, that hand, that hand. Someone else, that hand, that hand, that hand. There's someone else, that hand. Hands going up everywhere. That hand, God bless you. Anyone else? Yes, way in the back. God bless you. I need God. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. But I wonder if you'd do something real brave. It takes something, it takes something to do it. And I wonder if you'd say, I want you to pray with me. I want to leave this place knowing the Jesus that you're talking about. I want to be a part of his family. I want to be in the lineage of this house that you're talking about, Joseph. If you would, right now, but we don't even need to sing. I just wonder if you would step out of your seat and come and meet me right here and let me pray with you and introduce you to Jesus. Anybody like that? Anyone like to come? Now listen to me. Amen. Amen. They're coming. Somebody else. God bless you. I need some fellows and some people, some prayer counselors to come and help me in just a moment. Anyone else? Anyone else? You just want to come. Say, I need God in my life. This is just a step in the right direction. Bless you, honey. Someone else. I need some other people to come and help me. Someone else. Now listen. Here's what I'm going to do. Now I know that some of you haven't responded forward. But I want you to know, you can, you can accept Christ even in your seat. You can accept wherever you are. I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want everybody in this room, including these that are in front of me, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Will you do it? Everyone, everyone repeat after me and mean it in your heart. Can you pray this? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe you gave your son, Jesus. I believe you gave your son, Jesus. I believe he died for my sins. I believe he died for my sins. I believe he rose again from the dead. I believe he rose again from the dead. And I believe he's coming back. Today I put faith in him. Today I put faith in him. And I turn to you with all my heart. I turn to you with all my heart. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. And come into my life. And come into my life. From this day forward. From this day forward. I'm a new person. I'm a new person. And I'll follow you. And I'll follow you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now listen, if you prayed that prayer, man, yeah, go ahead. Amen. You guys, I want you to pray with them and talk to them in just a moment. Now, wait a minute. Now, I know that seems simple. I know that seems simple. We make it so complicated. The gospel is simple. That's, right. That's all you have to do is believe Amen. what I just prayed. Amen. And God comes into your life. And I don't care the devil's going to try to tell you it didn't happen. Maybe even some person might say, That's crazy. Don't believe it. That's right. Right today is the beginning of a brand Amen. new life for you. Here's what I want to do. I know you guys prayed it, but maybe someone in the seat. With everyone looking now, if you prayed that prayer and meant it, and you know God's come into your heart right now by faith, I want you to raise your hand right now wherever you are. Amen. Look around. That's wonderful. Amen. And today, today begins a journey. Today begins a journey of faith. Now, I want you guys to pray with them one more time and just talk to them a minute. Let them know what's going on. And let me bless the rest of the congregation and... and uh, and uh, uh, dismiss. Father, I thank you and praise you for every person that's here. I thank you, God, that uh, you've spoken to hearts and lives are changed because, because of your grace. And I pray that you would go with us. May each of us follow you on the journey, wherever it takes us, and ultimately take us to the place of prominence. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock. We're going to have a great time. You'll want to be here.